Good morning. My name is Joy Muchache. You are watching Health on Monday on the Y254 channel on Y in the Morning. Kindly hashtag Y in the Morning, hashtag Health on Monday. And also remember that please you can reach us on our social media platforms that is on Facebook, Twitter, uh, that's Y254 channel. On Instagram you can find us on Y254 underscore channel. And you can find me and interact with me on Joy underscore Muchache. And well, today we have an important topic to discuss. Today, because of the trend that has been happening, we've been losing the lives of a lot of young ladies in what we are calling femicide. Femicide is the killing of females by men, either just because of their gender or simply just because, you know, they've just been killed by a man. And today we have a psychologist that's going to give us an inside look on the minds or what is going on in the minds of the young men that are the perpetrators of such actions. His name is Dr. Hannington Ogonda. Please assist me in welcoming him. He's a psychologist and is here to discuss psychology when it comes to femicide. Karibu sana, Dr. Ogonda. Uh, thank you very much. Yes, we're glad to have you on our show. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, when we're talking out there, we had discussed a little bit and we're touching on the story of mostly Ivy Wangeshi and what happened to her. And, well, when it comes to relationships, because what I, what I understand is she was dating a young man and this relationship ended up being a toxic one because actually she was preparing. It was the eve of her birthday when she lost her life. She was preparing for her birthday. She was very excited for it. And um, I think because this man had called her and she hadn't picked up the phone, this man got very upset and he decided he was going to get some transport all the way from Thika until Eldoret. And when he was driving, his mindset was he was going to take the life of this young lady. And he reached there and he made sure that he did what he decided to do. Now, we'd like to hear your expertise and please, Tafadali, maybe you can share on um, how is it possible that somebody can drive that long distance and not change their mind? In your opinion, is this somebody who is mentally well? Well, thank you for the introduction. Uh, mental health uh, is composed of a variety of things. Yes. So many that uh, we can't mention all of them here. Yeah. As for him, uh, to my opinion, there is what we would call cumulative stress. Oh, okay. Cumulative stress. Cumulative is stress. Cumulative from okay. the word to, to accumulate. Okay. Yeah. It is a type of stress that piles up over a long period of time and mm -hmm. are not attended to. Mm -hmm. When this happens, mm -hmm. it can lead to one deciding on taking up either his or her life or the lives of others. I would say in this case, mm. uh, what was his name once again, the man? Ah, uh, let me get his name just to be right. Uh, whatever his name was, I must uh, it, yes. this man could have been suffering from cumulative stress mm -hmm. that made him go as far as from... Uh, Excuse me, please. His name is Naftali Kinudia Oh, yes, Naftali. Naftali, Naftali Kinudia. That could have been what made Naftali to drive all the way from Thika to Eldoret mm -hmm. to commit such a, a heinous act. Yes. It means mm -hmm. uh, uh, throughout the relationship there has been some problems mm -hmm. that have not been resolved mm -hmm. to, to some extent. Mm -hmm. So when these are not resolved, uh, the stresses continue to accumulate, which might be disastrous in the case of what he did to his um, supposedly wife or girlfriend, you know. Uh, so I think that's a type of mental illness that disturbs most of us, mm -hmm. that affects our daily lives and can make us react in one way or the other. Yes, mm -hmm. that is very true. And um, i just like to say, um, you know, sometimes when it comes to toxic relationships, and I'd like to ask the public, what would you think if a man asked you for a date and you refused and he insulted you via text and maybe deletes your number? Or 
what would you do if you were happy in a relationship and when refusing to give up your goods as a woman the man becomes violent maybe beats you or takes your life now unfortunately this happens on a day-to-day -day basis these small scenarios that I've mentioned mm -hmm. and that's what the toxic relationships are about mm -hmm. having one person that is having too much charge over the other person too much control over the other person and maybe dominating them in a negative way mm -hmm. and so what I'm seeing is that sometimes women do lose their lives but today we want to put an explanation as to why or what may be going on in the minds of the men that are perpetrating such acts against women now femicide once again we had said is a killing of a man oh uh, sorry a killing of a woman by a man and we'd like to once again remember that this happened in the case of Caroline Mwatha, Christine Maonga and Ivy Wangeshi and today we're going to focus on Ivy Wangeshi and once again I'd like to ask you so because of the um, scenarios I had mentioned before and I, I had said that maybe you know you go on a date a man asks you to give up your goods and you refuse, he becomes violent. This does happen. Mm -hmm. Now I'd like to know, in that um, kind of scenario, when women are being approached by men and we say no, I, I think there's, there's, we have now reached a point where women are fearful of saying no. What's your take on this? We've, I mean, we're scared of refusing anything now. Well, <coughs> if I look at uh, such a scenario, mm -hmm. Probably it is somebody that you have been uh, with for quite some time. Right. I think so. Because you cannot just meet somebody from the blue and he goes to that extent. Of course. Well, it depends on how much the person has invested in this relationship mm -hmm. and also how uh, intimate or how he feels towards you, like how much he loves you, or that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So when you put all this uh, together, mm -hmm. the man finds that uh, he should take control over what is uh, over over the woman. Whatever he feels that a woman should do should happen. So mostly it is general uh, thinking. A man thinks that he is on top of the world. He has spent so much in you. He has given you all his time. He right. has loved you right. and expects something back in return. Apart from that, I think you mentioned something about narcissism, which means, uh, you know, self-love. Narcissistic. Yeah. yeah, narcissistic narcissism. or narcissism. Yeah, self-love and uh, you want to show people that, uh, you know, you are capable of doing something. This is uh, a characteristic or a type of behavior that uh, not only men but also women have that can contribute to what is happening now in our daily lives and especially the relationships that would are you, Would you say that our out. men are becoming more narcissistic then? Um, it's like wamefika maali, wamesema, uh, no. I must have respect, I must, I must have this, I must have that. If I don't have it, I will take a life. Uh, not all men. Narcissism is a personality trait. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Not everybody is narcissistic. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it can contribute to what these men have been doing to their fellow lovers. It is not a must that you have to be a narcissist. Mm -hmm. To, pro, to do such an inious act. Mm. It is also dependent upon the economic situations that are prevailing at the current uh, uh, times. So considering how much, as I said before, how much one has spent, how much time you have given yourself to your uh, companion and um, the stresses involved in life, can lead to people behaving the way they are doing at the moment. Right, yeah. right. And you said um, that being a narcissist mm -hmm. is a personality trait. Yeah. And when we're talking about um, men such as Naftali, mm -hmm. people who drive from Thika to Elder without changing their yeah. minds, mm -hmm. they're, they're words that have been thrown their yeah. way mm -hmm. by other, um, I guess, people that are interested in the psychological field. Mm -hmm. I'd like maybe for you to explain to me and to the viewers the difference yeah. between a sociopath mm -hmm. and a psychopath mm -hmm. and why people have chosen to use these two terms mm -hmm. to describe Naftali. Well, uh, a sociopath is somebody who behaves weirdly t 
to people uh, in his social lives, you know, right. people around him. Right. He behaves weirdly. Strange. Yeah, yeah, strangely, the way he did, you know. Socially, it's not acceptable. Mm. There are so Someone many examples. Someone who does not behave in a way yeah, that's socially that acceptable. That socially is acceptable. Uh -huh. That's a sociopath. That's a sociopath. Yeah, a psychopath means, you know, it's related to the mind. Right. Yeah. Probably you have some kind of some mental illness or something. Right. Mental illness does not mean you have to be taken to Madari. Mm -hmm. You know. Of course. There are illnesses that we have that we can be walking around with. We're managing. We look normal, but we are not. Mm. Yes. So this is the difference between a psychopath and a sociopath. A sociopath to do with the socially unaccepted behaviors and a psychopath has mentally unaccepted behaviors. Right. So this person, uh, because he is undergoing a certain uh, kind of a strain that we don't know, he could have exhibited both. He exhibited both. Yeah, he could have exhibited both, both personalities. Both sociopath and yes. psychopath. Mm -hmm. Because you see, driving all the way from thicker to um, to Eldoret right. means he had something set in his mind to do yes. that nobody could stop him. Yes. You know, you cannot be angry for that long. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Mm. At some point, you'll change your mind. You'll change your say, mind. Ah, I I. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He never did that. Right. Yes. And that is why when we began this uh, show, I talked about cumulative stress. Right. This could have led to. Uh, anger that cannot be resolved. He mm. was very angry, you know, yeah, and true. nobody could stop him from doing that. Yeah, so true. this is something that he has put in his mind and has been happening for a long time, mm. which has not been addressed. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm. So that is what leads to what uh, has been happening both socially and uh, psychologically. Mm. Mm -hmm. And um, now that we've discussed the differences between sociopath and psychopath and why Naftali has mm. been called some of these names, mm. now I'd like us to move along to maybe the mindset mm. of an abuser because sometimes mm. abusers tend to be either sociopath or psychopath or both. Mm -hmm. And um, in the mindset of an abuser, if I could put the mindset of an abuser in one line, it would be, it's you that made me do it. Mm. An abuser will beat you, beat you, beat you, or do whatever, mm. and then come back after an hour, say, I'm sorry, but it's you that made me do it. It's your fault. Mm. And um, I'm trying to kind of look at every single area. If he's not, a, if such people are not psychopaths, they're not sociopaths, they're not, they don't have depressive symptoms, they don't have schizophrenia, mm. or maybe it could just be an instance that this guy is an abusive man, mm. and he just decided that, you know, for not picking up my call, for switching off your phone, mm. I will make sure I take your life. Mm. And maybe we can delve into the mindset of an abuser where the man says or the woman says, it's you that made me do it. Or where we hear in relationships that are toxic, like we started off by discussing, mm. there's a thing that we call being made mad or um, making mad, which is where normally the man tries to try and make the lady look like she's crazy. If she, the, the woman approaches and says, I know you're cheating on me, I have this mm. evidence and this evidence, the man be like, no, you're crazy, you're mad. Mm. And so that sometimes in psychology is called making mad. And maybe we could discuss these things, both um, blaming of the victim or making the vic trying to you know, make it seem as if you made me do it. In the mind of an abuser, could you open up what happens in the mind of someone who is abusive, who has decided that it's your fault? Well, I didn't get the last bit of it. Right. Mm -hmm. um, when it comes to the mind of an abuser who has decided that this is your fault, the reason I'm going to take your life, it doesn't matter, it doesn't mean that I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. It's your fault. Mm -hmm. You know, and this is where they tend to get most of their basis from. No matter what they do, they'll mm -hmm. always blame you. Mm -hmm. And this is why one is an abuser, one is a victim. Mm -hmm. So can we touch on the mind of an abuser okay. and ask ourselves, um, if, Na if Naftali was an abuser, what could have been going through his mind at that particular time that he was driving mm -hmm. and when he perpetrated the act? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, this, in simple terms, uh, we are just uh, talking about uh, <coughs> 
the stresses that we have in life. Mm -hmm. There are very many types of stresses in life. We have day-to-day -day stresses of life. These are things that uh, by the end of the day you get uh, to have a solution to it. For example, when you wake up, you talk about like, what dress am I going to put on? Will I have lunch wherever I'm going to, you know? Mm. Well, but by the end of the day, you will have found a solution to whatever stresses that are disturbing you. These are called day-to-day -day stress. They are not very serious, okay? Then what we talked about is uh, cumulative stress, uh, where, you know, so many types of problems that you have left to accumulate, but they have not been addressed. Mm -hmm. This will lead to a cumulative stress or for post-traumatic stress disorder if not well addressed. And then we have also critical incident uh, stress. Mm -hmm. Critical incident stress is uh, a type of stress that um, is spontaneous. It is not planned, you know. It is abrupt. Mm. For example, being involved in an accident, but you don't die. You know, the reaction that uh, you will have uh, after a critical incident mm. uh, would be quite stressful. Or even a bomb blows up outside this building. Right. How will we react? These right. are critical incidents because mm. we have not uh, planned for them. We are not expecting them. So right. we are reacting in different ways. You can run, you can cry, somebody can, you know, do all sorts of things. Mm -hmm. And then we also have post-traumatic stress disorder. These post-traumatic stress disorders or PTSD, uh, uh, they come later after the event has taken place. It can be a week, a month, uh, two months, a year, or something like that. The symptoms come later in life. And then coming back to your question, I think mindset is related to stresses or depressions that have not been addressed. Mm. It is not that this man has set his mind to do this and will have to do it. These are internal, uh, internal uh, processes Mm -hmm. that he may not be under the control of right. unless they are addressed. Right. So when we have not addressed these psychological problems, it becomes very difficult for the person to uh, control himself towards the person he is going to abuse. Okay. Yeah. And now um, we need to move on to the next question because uh, when we do close, I'm mm. going to ask what we can do mm. in raising our children yeah. so that they can handle those stressful conditions, so mm. that they don't have to drive from one, yeah. from Thika to Eldoret mm. in a stressful condition. Yes. But that is when we close. Mm. But for now, and we've also discussed victim blaming, mm. well now I want to talk about in Kenya, yeah. when it comes to you being a psychologist, mm. the divorce rates <clears throat> have also been increasing. Yes. Yes. Mm. And again, this topic is also kind of enticed with toxic relationships mm. and that's how divorce comes in as well yes now apparently when we're talking in the beginning i heard you said that um sometimes people need to be invested in these relationships you must have spent some years in these relationships mm. and in the case that you've done that sometimes you spend 10 years in a relationship not yes. just relationship in a marriage mm -hmm. you've been married for 10 years or more mm -hmm. and um what happens is you divorce and just because a lady has maybe asked for a divorce or something, um, if we are to take such matters into our hands and decide that this is a femicide case, you know, she, we are, I should take her life or whatever, mm. because, you know, I've invested 10 years, mm. I've built that house because of her, mm. we've raised children, I've paid their school fees, those children are now about teenagers, you know. Mm. And, you know, then this man takes into account everything that he has spent mm. and he loses his mind for a second yeah. and he gets angry and he says, no, mm. because of that, you deserve to die. Mm -hmm. Can we touch on that? Because sometimes then we say femicide is justified in Kenya because of 
such things. Mm -hmm. Femicide is actually justified in Kenya because of investment. Mtu wanakuja na sema apana, ni me invest kwa hii relationship. Mm -hmm. There is no way you can do that to me. Mm -hmm. Ini mali yangu, that's my property. Mm -hmm. I've, pay, I've paid this, I've done that. Mm -hmm. There's no way you can get away with that. And they take your life. And mm -hmm. that's how femicide is justified in this country. Yeah. And maybe we can talk about divorce mm -hmm. and bring that in and say, mm -hmm. when it comes to marriages, yeah. <laughs> what if we're to do that? Would, would there be any, I mean, would there be any Kenyan left? I mean, if we had to say because of this, let me take your life, you've invested, I mean. Okay. What, what I would talk about in relation to what you have raised, yeah. um, mental health is an area mm -hmm. that um, has been neglected in Kenya. True. And in Africa True. as a whole. It is a very, very important uh, sector very. in uh, the outside world, yes. the Americas, yeah. go to Europe, uh, you know, all these developed countries give mental health a priority. Yeah. Because even in schools. Yes, even in schools. Because a healthy mind will produce a healthy generation and the work uh, outcome as well. For example, you cannot be here, all of you, if you are not mentally healthy. That's true. Yes. Even if you are, uh, you are your performance, if you have low mental health, your performance will be very low. Meeting objectives will be very hard. Yes. So what we are lacking that is leading to what you have just talked about, divorce and that kind of stuff, is that uh, we need to focus on mental health of our community, especially this country, and Nairobi uh, in particular. The lifestyles in Nairobi here is very difficult and challenging, okay? So when you are confronted with the smallest thing, so far you become irritated. Okay. You lose your mind. You lose your mind. Over the smallest thing. Yeah, thing. very tiny thing. Some of these things that result to people, uh, you know, seeking for divorce, as you have said, could be displaced displacement. It's a type of defense mechanism mm -hmm. where, you know, <coughs> for example, you are my boss, you scold me. There's nothing I can do to you. What do I do? I go back home and beat my children. Uh -huh. Yes. Because I have I scolded you. Yes. I cannot do anything to you. I go to somebody that I can manage, yeah. which is always <laughs> one's wife or children. the children. So you are dis displacing your anger to these children. Ah, misdisplaced anger. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's a defense mechanism. It makes you feel all right. right. Other examples are like if I want to buy like a car, then I ask how much it costs. They tell me like it's 10 million. I know I don't have it, but I want to feel better. What do I say? After all, it's a very old model, you know. <laughs> it's out of fashion. Why is it 10 million? It's old. So I'm making myself feel comfortable with the situation in which I am. So. Coming back to uh, divorce cases, mm. uh, we have not um, uh, addressed areas of mental illness. Mm -hmm. So if we address all this, you'll find that there will be a deduction in the rate of divorce, the, re the rate of uh, uh, killings in, um, between uh, couples, and uh, the rate of uh, you know, dropping out of school and other antisocial behavior. Mm -hmm. Let us just focus on mental health in each and every sector, be it at workplace, at home, or even in schools. Right. This will reduce the rate of uh, antisocial behavior that we are experiencing every now and then. Mm. Mm. That is some very powerful advice. Yes. And lastly, maybe we can just, as we wind up, mm. our last question, my last question to you would be, maybe we can touch on <coughs> uh, um, parents who are raising their children right now, I feel like 
since we said in the states and in Europe, mm. mental health is something that is taught yeah, even in it's schools. Very important, yeah. yeah, there's something like depression. There's something unafundishwa. Mm -hmm. So that when it happens, you're not too surprised. Yeah, not surprised. And you know how it's to something handle you have handled. It. I so mean, you have come across it before. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so our last question would be mm -hmm. for our parents. Yes. How can you maybe give them some advice mm -hmm. on how to bring up their children, mm -hmm. on how to handle stress? Yeah, because yeah. also, um, our generation doesn't know how to handle stress. Stress yes. management in our generation is very low. Yeah. Somebody gets stressed, they go and self-medicate yeah. via alcohol, yeah. or drugs, whatever. Mm -hmm. Stress management is low. Yeah. How can we? How can parents raise children mm -hmm. to handle life, yes. handle the the negatives of life, the mm -hmm. ups and downs of life, the rejections of life? Mm -hmm. Because we rejected, you will be mm -hmm. at work, everywhere, yeah. mm -hmm. with family, with relation. You will be rejected. Mm -hmm. How do you take it? How can you raise a child mm -hmm. to be strong enough? Yes. Well, it's a very good uh, uh, question. What I would say about this is. Uh, Apart from training the child on stress management, which most uh, households don't know, yeah. it is my suggestion that uh, mental health as a unit should be incorporated in schools from uh, early life, uh, yes. maybe standard one, Even primary. primary to secondary. Mm. This is where we have always been neglecting this area. So we grow up not knowing how to manage stress. People know how to manage stress when they go to colleges and they are trained on what is stress and how do you manage uh, stress. So for the parents, I think the community should be sensitized on creating support groups and encourage our children to join these support groups. Support groups could be in churches, could be among the family members, people who you go to when you want to, when you have a problem. It can be our community leaders, okay? So incorporating mental health in our uh, curriculum will try, will help reduce uh, or train the people on how to manage uh, mm -hmm. the stress. Mm -hmm. And okay. also talking about it if you have an idea. But the only problem is that we are less educated on that field. Mental health uh, project or programs should be incorporated in our uh, educational curriculum. I think that it will be the easiest way to mm. uh, make the children grow up knowing how to manage these stresses. That is very true. Yes. I'd like to thank you for your advice and your expertise on this particular topic, Mr. Uganda, Dr. Uganda, excuse thank me. Thank you very much. Yeah, mm -hmm. and thank you for coming to the show. You're welcome. Yes, and, hope and if see. any of our viewers have any questions or any views about what we've discussed, please mm -hmm. remember you can reach us on mm -hmm. our social media handles. Mm -hmm. That is Y254 on both Facebook and Twitter. And then on Instagram, you can find us on Y254 underscore channel. And mm -hmm. I can be found on Twitter. That mm -hmm. is Joy underscore Mochache. This has been a wonderful talk. Make sure you hashtag Y in the morning hashtag help on Monday and maybe the last word I could say is as parents who are listening or any government officials who are listening we need to incorporate health, um, mental health into our curriculums at a very early age starting at the primary school level and so that our children can grow up knowing what to expect and how to handle stress properly thank you so much for watching